Hello, I'm Constance Butel, and I'm a BERT member, Benicia Emergency Response Team member, and today, September 12th, 2009, is our final drill of the training, quarterly training drills of the 2009 season. And in our third drill, we focus on triage and emergency medicine. The process today involves our BERT volunteers coming and doing intake and processing. They get formed in teams of four. Once they have a team of four, they're deployed to their staging area, represented by our caches, and they will start to form their team, put radios together, do team assignments, and then they'll deploy from the cache in order to do, uh, for this drill, triage and emergency medicine. I drive the sun. What do you want? <laughs> In Athens, worth it. Way to be smart. They're going to have the compound fracture. Oh so they're going to go through the whole triage with you. They'll make sure you're breathing. There'll be no problem with your breathing because you're fractured. So you just breathe normal and they don't have to do anything about that. Then they'll see if you have a pulse. Mm -hmm. So they'll feel for your pulse and you know, you should act like you're in shock because you're losing blood from there. So, you know, um, act weak, say I'm feeling very weak, I'm feeling very thirsty, I feel very cold. I, uh, you know, all the signs of shock, okay? And so they should identify that you're in shock. And then you can, if they don't come down and start controlling the bleeding, you can say, I think I'm losing my blood from here. You know, <laughs> give them some fuel like that. So they'll start putting some gauze and putting some bandages, yeah, yeah, yeah. and they're going to try to splint the leg and try to get your circulation under control. And then they should assess your mental status, and you be perfectly clear. They'll ask you simple commands. You follow the simple commands. So you should not have anything wrong with your mental status, mm -hmm. nothing wrong with your breathing. Only thing wrong with you is your pee, your perfusion. Am, you I, am I allowed to red. yell that? Oh, yeah. Oh, okay. Yell. Make as much sound and <laughs> as many movements to stress out your rescuer. <laughs> you want the rescuer to get stressed out. Um, was it shock? You're going to be in shock. Okay. But I'm the person that's supposed to die. Well. Okay. So you're okay. So he's in shock and he's going to die. So anyone else who wants to be in shock and who's going to die should do exactly like he does. When they come up to you and they look for respirations, you'll have very few respirations, less than 30. Okay. At first, have no respirations. They'll position your head in the correct way, then you start breathing, but breathe very little bit. And then you should uh, show that you're in shock by breathing very slowly. Then they'll check your pulse. Again, do the um, look. You'll be cold, you'll be in shock, you'll be white, you'll be blue, showing that you're in shock. Should they, sh they should identify that you're in shock from that. And then they'll follow, they'll look at your mental status. And obviously, in shock, you cannot follow simple commands. If they ask you to move or open your eyes or talk to them, you can do none of it. You can groan, you can try to just kind of flicker your eyes open and then close them back. You know, very few movements, maybe random movements of your arm or leg, but if they ask you for purposeful things, like show me one finger, squeeze my hand, you can't do none of those. So then they should tag you as red, you're in shock. So everyone who's going to be in shock knows how to behave but he now. He said uh, he's going to be dead. You're going to die at the end? Yeah. Oh, okay, so then after that, after you do that, you're in shock, then do the dead, like stop breathing. <laughs> and then just lie still and don't move at all. So then they'll know that you were in shock and now, the, now you died. Okay. So you start out, uh, you start out being able I to like breathe. It. Very realistic. Or not it. being able to breathe. You start out not the being able moment. to breathe. They position your head. You start breathing. And I start talking. And you start talking, but you're talking nonsense. Yeah. Okay. <laughs> and then they'll check your pulse. Your pulse will be okay. And yeah, then they'll ask you to do simple things. You won't be able to do it. And then you stop Good breathing morning. again and you die. You, they, you're going, they're going to put a splinter on you, a splint on you. Okay, good. So they're going to ask you to breathe and see if you can breathe. You can go ahead and breathe for them. Then they're going to check your circulation and your pulse. They'll feel for a pulse. They'll push on your fingernail. Then they'll ask you to do simple things. So you'll have none of it. You'll have no problems with breathing, no problems with your circulation, and uh, you'll have no problems following commands. If they ask you to do simple commands, you can follow all of that. But then you keep screaming, my leg is hurting, my leg is hurting, I think it's broken. And they should go put a splint on it. So then I think that they could tag her as delayed, right? Because she has none of it. So she could be tagged as yellow. Right. Okay. Yeah. Mm -hmm. So you can be tagged as yellow. As long as you're not in shock, 
your breathing and your moving and your mental, mental. status is clear. Uh -huh. Okay. <laughs> what are your injuries? I'm in shock. You're in shock. She's in shock. She's blue. She's got s blue is because she's not able to breathe. She's in shock. So all the carbon dioxide is accumulating inside her. That's why she's blue. She's cyanosed. The blue color is called being cyanosed or cyanosis. So she's blue. She's in shock. Um, and you're in shock because you're losing blood or uh, you're losing blood. Wi wi uh, you're not breathing. Actually, you know, you're in shock because you have a head injury. You have blood coming out of your nose. Very good. Okay. So... Uh, your name is? Tori. Okay, so Tori's in shock because she's got a head injury. They're going to come up and see if she's breathing. She's going to have no breathing initially. They position your head. You start breathing. Breathe slow because you're in shock. Then they're going to check your circulation. Make sure they feel for a pulse. Push on your fingernail. You'll have very weak pulse. We'll tell them that, that she has very weak pulse. And I'm not going to wake up. And you're not going to wake up. And then they're going to ask you to do simple things. You don't open your eyes. And they'll tag you as immediate. You want to be still alive, right? Okay, so then breathe a little bit, but not more than 30. And don't follow any commands so that you're in shock. And we'll tell them that you're cold and blue. They can see that. And so they should tag you as red. So as soon as the, the, the paramedics get here, the ambulances get here, red means you're the first person to go to the hospital because you can still be saved. You're not green. You're not hysterical. You're not yellow. You're not delayed. The splint is yellow. And you're not black, you're not dead, so you're immediate. So you're the first one to go to the hospital. Okay, who else is in group two? Identify the hysteric lady as a walking wounded. Yes. We try to reposition his head. 
He started breathing for a little while, uh -huh. and then he quit breathing. Our, our, our mannequin? Expired. No, the oh, mannequin was dead already. Okay, yeah, okay. Just wait. So we you got reposition the airway, always try to reposition the airway to see if they'll start breathing, uh -huh. and then put them in a rescue position if they do start to breathe. You all know the rescue position on the side, so that if they vomit, it'll go off to the side, one hand under the head to hold the head back, the other hand over the hip and on the ground. Stay in your stability. Their hand under their head to hold it back.